morning, Kathy. All is just in order. What? Everything's in order? All is just in order? Yeah, all is in order. Tutto posto. Oh, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Morning, Lisa. All right, we're, we're a couple minutes past, so why don't we begin? Uh, today's is Sunday the 20th of August 2023 and this is the Berean Sunday School class in Parsippany Baptist Church and we're studying the topic of inheritance. Uh, before we begin, if there, are, if you have any prayer requests, uh, I know I've got a couple to, to, to mention, um, primarily chronic illnesses and, and so on. Uh, yes? We'll give God praise. He answers prayers. Amen. Praise God, answer prayers in many ways. So sometimes we go through trouble, and the trouble actually turns around to be a blessing. So All right. Okay. We give God praise for that. Amen. Well, he gets praise for everything, but we'll do that too, yes. All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for who you are. Uh, God of all, a uh, God uh, uh, who's, one of your, whose essential characteristics is love. Uh, we give you thanks and praise because through your love, even though we sinned and incurred your death penalty upon us, you loved us and sent your son that, that he might be our redeemer. And then you even drew us in, into your salvation plan and you saved us. And you keep us saved despite our foils and foibles and, and this, that, and the other. Uh, what a great God you are. And, and as Ralph has mentioned, uh, we, we give you thanks and praise because you turn uh, any kind of circumstance into blessing. Uh, and so we give you thanks and praise for who you are and for many of the things that you've done, but particularly the things that we th see through Scripture that you've done for us and for the world and uh, the world's behalf of, uh, through Christ Jesus, God the Son, your Son, our Savior. We ask that you'd be with us today and guide us through our lessons, <clears throat> not only in the Sunday school hour, but in the, uh, the, the morning service and the evening service today. Uh, strengthen Pastor Bryden as he leads the church and, and prepares messages and, and delivers them uh, week by week. Uh, give him great insight, uh, but also encouragement and strength. We thank you for, for giving him to us too. Uh, even though we had a year without a, a formal senior pastor, you developed him and you've given him to us, and, and we give you thanks and praise. Uh, we ask on behalf of a number who are ailing, we think of John Bolin in particular, and, and Jerry uh, providing long-term care for him. We ask that you'd uh, keep him very, very close to you, keep his mind focused on you, encourage him, and bring him to the position of giving thanks to you day by day. Strengthen Jerry, give her insight as to how to uh, care for John. Uh, but for the both of them, help them, we ask, and, and we, we turn to you because we don't know what else to do. We think of Kathy Brown uh, with ca two kinds of cancer again and now undergoing treatments in between the application of chemotherapies. Uh, we, we ask for strength for her and wisdom for Pastor Brown and for Kathy as to how they should proceed in, um, in living day by day with this stability, and, and we ask that you protect them as the winter months come and, and the, the harsh winter uh, weather uh, comes in on them. We, we lift them to you and ask for you to provide. We think also of Lauren Barry Barnes and her cancer, Jared and his chronic pain, uh, and, and I'm sure there's others, but Father, we lift these to you, and we know that these people are dear to you, uh, and we ask in Jesus' name that you would remit their, their conditions and bring them reasonable or, or relative health. Uh, and we ask that they would glorify you more and more. But draw them close to you day by day, even as they go through these issues. Be with us now as we try to, to learn from your word. Teach us what, it, what you have for us. Help us to appropriate your truths and to deport ourselves day by day in a way that pleases you. Help us to be very much pleasing to you. Help us to walk with you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. So uh, you can see from the title, we're talking about inheritance. We've been there for now uh, two weeks. We, we started out 
And we looked at, at these general topics here. We asked the question, what is inheritance? And we saw uh, the question, what does it mean to inherit? What can be inherited? Who inherits? What is the basis for inheritance? When does an inheritance become effective? And we looked at these from the secular standpoint. Uh, and we see in the Bible that much of these same things are true in, in Scripture. Uh, but generally, uh, an inherit there's, a, there's somebody who gives an inheritance and sets up conditions for the inheritance. And usually that's, in, in, among humans, the person dies. And then the, the, their will, their last will and testament come, becomes effective and the conditions are um, uh, laid out for the start of the inheritance and then they, they're distributed on, uh, in accordance with the conditions in the will. Uh, but we saw also as we look at Christian inheritance or Bible inheritance, there's inheritance that it is now that, that's already given and there's no death of the testator. We don't have to look to the death of Christ Jesus for the, um, for the distribution of things. That's done, but we see God provides an inheritance. Jesus um, executes some of this as well. We see some of the inheritances given by him, but it's not based on his death. We see some of it we have now and some of it when we die. So. Inheritance in the Bible is a little bit different. We looked at uh, what are the Koine Greek words related to inheritance, and we saw that it's primarily klerao and its cognates. A kleros is a, um, an inheritance. Klerao is the verb to inherit, and there's different permutations of that. We looked at examples in the Bible uh, in the Old Testament, and now we're really kind of digging through in the New Testament. Uh, and really we're going to try to get in today a little bit more here what do believers inherit so this now is what do we inherit as believers uh, and as we go along you know when do we inherit inherit it uh, can we lose the inheritance um, all these kind of questions and as I mentioned last week in particular the topic of inheritance is is kind of all over the place it's it's a mixed bag of things it's not as cut and dry as God dies and, the, and, and op we open the will and, and we get the inheritance and it's, it's a portion to us while we still live. It's just not that way. It's much more variegated. It's, it's, um, it's all over the place. It's rich. It's very, very rich. It's, it's um, if you want to say the, use the word colorful, multicolored, uh, you could use that. But it's, it's really varied and very rich. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to, we probably won't get here today, but is it conditional? I think you know that some of it is. So, what is inheritance? Um, biblically, let's ask the question now, picking up from where we were last week. We saw this slide last week as well, but what do believers inherit? And among other things, blessing. Now, the word potentially is, is there because um, the, the passage we're going to look at indicates that maybe there's a potential associated with inheriting a blessing. First Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, uh, to sum up, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. So we, we see there's a, a, a sort of conditional. The verb is second person plural. It's aorist tense, which is a, a point action. Can be past, can be now, can be future, but it's, it's point action. Um, 